So what are your takeaways from like your country's perspectives um, and how the EU potentially also sees them? Like, um, do you think that Paraguay gains importance with this electron observation mission, for example? Definitely. Yeah, I, I do believe that this uh, of observations, uh, you know, coming especially from the international, um, you know, from also from, from different uh, international partners is crucial for our democracies. We do want to have uh, free elections and also a lot of transparency. And in that, uh, that the EU is present is kind of a guarantee of, of that. Um, so, yes, uh, I was really happy to know that, uh, that, Gab that Gabriel Mato was going to be the chief of observer, and I, I felt that uh, it was uh, a good, uh, that it was such a good thing that he actually asked me, what do you think, what is your perspective, what are, what are the young, I don't know, opinions about this and this, uh, I, I think I felt hurt, you know, in a way, and um, I think these uh, elections are crucial for Para for Paraguay. Um, if I have to be, um, I don't know what the results are going to be. You know, sometimes are I don't know. Uh, um, I don't know how to say encuesta. Polls, yeah. Yeah, the polls. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if if we should trust what uh, our poll says, but it's a challenge because we have we've had um, this political party called Partido Colorado who has ruled Paraguay for over 70 years and now um, I think the political landscape is kind of changing. This is the first time where uh, all the opposition is actually um, is actually supporting the other candi candidate the opposition candidate, and we are all together as opposition uh, for the first time. So I do believe that it maybe there's going to be a transition in, in Paraguay. I do ho hope that. But yeah, um, and another thing, Paraguayan population. Uh, I I know that there are some difference now because uh, I can see that. I don't want to say that. I'm I'm sorry, but you guys are aging. <laughs> like <laughs> and there's <Sorry>. no <laughs> no no. But in in general, in in Europe, there I I do know that uh, there's a problem that. But in, in contrast to Latin America, I can see actually young people. They are going to decide who the next government is going to be, if of course they vote. So uh, I hope that will happen. That we will have a high levels of participation. And that actually the young people will, uh, will vote. I think that's crucial. Mm -hmm. But yes, Ga Gabriel Mato told me that he's going to Paraguay soon, actually three times before the, the election. So I was trying to recommend him some nice restaurants and everything. Pa Paraguay meets uh, is the best. <laughs> 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 but yes, um, I think it was such a good experience to just the fact that I had the, op the opportunity to talk to them about my own country. Yeah, that's, that's really crucial. And I think also like what you what you just mentioned, like with young people, like having really like being a decisive voice, I think in Europe we will see that in the few years um, because at the moment you have like a kind of like a change also with young people slowly coming to voting age, more and more people who voted differently, for example, um, are not so um, like leaving into political parties anymore. So I think there's also change in Europe coming and it's going to be interesting for sure to see it at the European elections next year as well. But I think also what's interesting this year is like this in general Latin American focus with the Latin American summit of what the commission proposes to see if that really moves things forward and like also see how that uh, changes. So David, for Costa Rica, how do you see the situation? Um, what are also like your experiences from this week? Like, do you see, for example, that um, Costa Rica is on the radar of like the politicians working on uh, Latin America, or rather not? Well, with the European Commission, they definitely were informed about Costa Rica and Korean themes and topics, and I think they have that clear. Uh, I would say, however, part of what we've learned, which has been a lot, uh, talking to MEPs, you know, from the European People's Party. It's very interesting to meet them and to know their perspective and how they see politics, you know. But since we've been talking about center, center right parties, I, th I do think that we as Latin Americans, you know, uh, representing our parties, we definitely saw how they 
talk a lot between themselves in Europe and they coordinate. And I think we definitely need to do that in Latin America more. That has been a big lesson of this week. Um, I would also point out, talking about youth participation, that definitely, I mean, our parties, they do need to have ne also, I mean, obviously the leaders they have right now, but also new leaders, young people, because they, they can transform a lot of how the voting can take place. You know, they can see, the, if you see different leaders that share the values and that they are new phases within polit political systems, I think that definitely has an implication not, not only in the next election, but in the next, I don't know, 10 elections, you know, or 20 elections. So we definitely have a big area over there. Now, as for Costa Rica, I would point out, well, we had elections last year. We have, um, in the our Congress, we have six parties represented. Ours is the third force right now with only one MEP less than the current government, you know. <laughs> so we, we, we're happy that we're a strong party in Costa Rica, of course. But that also makes us think of how we need to project ourselves, you know, and how we need to, to grow and to transform ourselves not only for the next election, but for the next years, you know, next decades. Costa Rica, yeah. it, ha it has an interesting phenomenon. We were, there is a, a report called the State of the Nation Report. Last year, they say that around 20% of Costa Ricans identify themselves as ambivalent between the democratic and other forms of government, you know. So I do think that we need to get the youth involved, you know, because young people talk to other young people and they can transform a generation. And s since CAS is such a strong force for democracy, what we can do when we talk to other young people and they learn why democracy is so important, you know, because many people just heard that from their parents or their grandparents, you know, so it's important for young people to have that conviction, you know, and to also strengthen the educational policies and to show those civic values, why democracy is important, why the rule of law is important. And definitely from these meetings, we see that Europe and Latin America share a lot of common values, you know, and I think that is also a wake up call of why Europe and Latin America need to work a lot closer. CAS is doing that for us and we're so thankful for it. But hopefully this can be something that all Europeans I understand, you know, that Latin America shares common values with Europe. We believe in democracy. We believe in the rule of law. Sure, we need to grow a lot more and, and get it more perfect, you know. <laughs> But definitely, I think that exchange between Europe and Latin America will be key, not only for right now, but for the future. I think also it's not only like Latin America learning from Europe, but also Europe learning from Latin America, because I think this is also a mentality that like young people change a little bit more. Um, and also in our generation, we like hear more from your side also. I found it super, super useful this week to, to listen to like what you all in these discussions said, like what were your convictions, what were your like problems, what were your challenges, what you also asked the politicians for, because I think um, this is something that we can only like guess here in Europe, we, we cannot know that. And we can only like obviously listen to you and also hear how Europe needs to change its policy towards Latin America and, and also other global um, regions. Um, and I think that's that, that was super helpful also for a lot of uh, the people we met. So um, I'm, I think also that was a crucial part of the delegation that we had this week. Um, maybe shifting a little bit more, or do you yeah, want yeah, to? I, yeah, I just wanted to mention that for me it was really important uh, know, to to have the opportunity to exchange some, I don't know, some, some of our practice with mm, with the other young politicians from Latin America as well. I, I do believe that exchange, uh, you know, is this exchange of knowledge, experiences and everything, because now I know that many of the problems that we have, I don't know, as uh, young politicians are shared pro problems of the region and even in, in Europe. So maybe we can try to find some solutions, but together, because we shared so many things. And for me, like, I've learned a lot from, I don't know, uh, Mexico, Argentina, a lot of things that I actually didn't knew, and I was just, uh, you know, right beside them. So I think that we have to also, um, in a region, we have to work together, and, yeah, of, of course, from there, we can uh, exchange a lot of things, knowledge, experiences, Uh, and as he mentioned, we 
clearly share values. So I, so I think this this week was uh, it was a a week of learning constantly during the meetings, but also outside. You know, outside and um, yeah. in every dinner, <laughs> in every break. You know, we had breakfast every day together, and we were just talking about our countries and what is going on with the with the current political situation in every country, city. And I, I, I actually I'm surprised because we are uh, yeah, it, that we have some shared problems as populism, why young people they it's so hard to get them actually to work uh, in politics and I don't know, also we discuss a lot about um, the po political participation of women and Now I'm surprised because I didn't knew that in Mexico they're they did uh, they're doing a good job uh, regarding that uh, regarding that. Uh, she mentioned that is uh, the percentage is amazing of how actually women are involved in in, in politics. And as you mentioned, uh, there are a lot of things that you guys can learn from us. Um, and yeah. Ah, no, for sure. I mean, what I'm writing down from that is for sure like more coordination between like uh, countries and that we can also support as CAS or as um, like European countries, but also to uh, get more groups together for a continental breakfast to uh, find new <laughs> ways of diplomacy, of that course. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that cannot be, of course, uh, also you help. No, but um, in general, also you, you spoke about women political participation. And I think also like when we had this huge discussion with the European Commission on that, was quite interesting to also hear these different viewpoints yeah. and, and perspectives so maybe like we can start it was like fun though because <laughs> we were all listening to them and it was actually a, a really good meeting but suddenly um what was his name um gonzalo gonzalo uh, yeah. asked something about hey but do you consider yourself a uh, feminist or not and then the debate just started and i think it was really good because and then we didn't want it to leave because the discussion was so good and we were just Uh, we were so into it. <laughs> well, he, he was surprised of why a uh, young woman would be part of center center right parties, which yeah, that, we that, were that, that was his question, right? So it was very interesting the fact that he asked that question, but obviously the response from our colleagues, you know, they they of course the young women being leaders and knowing why they believe in their parties and why they believe in our value values, I think that is very. Ho I mean, it brings hope, you know of the next generations to come, you know. Now that you were talking about it in Costa Rica, we have 50-50 laws, you know, for women to be in po in politics and in Congress, almost half are women, like around 48% probably, I would say. And with the current laws, it could also happen that they it could be 52%, you know. So I think that is also something that amazed them in the European Commission, the fact that Costa Rica and Mexico has have those laws you know that allow for more women participation and of course that just like we talked about youth getting more involved obviously women getting more involved is very important as a Costa Rican I wasn't aware of the situation in other Latin American countries yeah it's mine you know where they have laws but uh, I don't know 20% 30% Costa Rica is 50% you know what the law say says so I think that was nice you know as a, as a country to say well okay we are we're an example of how to get women, <laughs> more women involved into politics, you know, and them taking the leadership. Right now our party, the the leader of the parliamentary group of our party, is she's a young woman, you know, and that's very important. And I, I think this exchange with fellow Latin American p political parties also helps in, in us letting them know about this. And yeah, I think that is very good. Well, in in Paraguay, um, sadly, still um, it's really low the the percentage of women becoming involved in in politics. But we also discuss about how it's mostly uh, well, it's a structural problem. Also, like it's a systemic thing. Is um, it's not only like um, um, it's not only the that if I was a woman and I wanted to become a politician. There are a lot of things that I have to that are that I have to think about. Well, and and how can states actually um, um, encourage? Yeah, in, encourage women, but also ha help them. How will, I think it was really 
good to know how, for example, Melly, one of her colleagues here, like she told me she w- she is a mom, she, do, she does have, have a family, but at the same time she's a politician and how she can manage uh, the whole thing and how maybe our societies, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking far away, there's a still a lot of machism and, and maybe there's some another barriers uh, that first need to be... Uh, that we need to solve this first in order to yeah, encourage women to actually uh, have a saying in, in, in the political decisions. So, but we do have to have these spaces. We are, you know, <laughs> which I found quite important. interesting this week, like also to see like how this group interacted with like, of course, uh, five different um, women politicians, but also like, for example, David as a um, as a representative of the of the country, which has actually the laws like fifty fifty, <laughs> what you just said, to bring them together and see like, hey, we're bur- working from both sides in Latin America to actually achieve that. And I think that's some, for example something also Europe could could learn something from how the coordination once we brought it together for only a week, how mm-hmm. easy it was to learn and exchange best practices from each other, which. I found quite impressive also like when you said like you were talking with Lydia Pereira but also in the other appointments that it was really like this group was merging and, and really like saying okay like I'm from Colombia I have this problem how is it about Mexico so it was also an exchange with each other um, which I think also can can lead to like something that how Europe changes its per- perspective on Latin America in the in not only the coming months but also the years to come if it comes to new strategic communication between Latin America and Europe 